Here we have another example of two masses. And we are again looking for the equation of motions of masses M1 and M2. Something interesting to note here, if you look at the diagram, there is no external input force to this system. But in fact, the excitation that you give to this system could be anything, could be an acceleration, could be a speed, could be a force or a displacement. In this case, the forces are not specified. And you can assume that one of the inputs to this system is the displacement of one of those masses. For instance, we could give M2 a displacement x2 and assume that this is the input to the system. And then derive all the equations as a function, functions of displacement. Well, if M2 is moving to the right, because now the input is the displacement x2, M2 is connected to M1 through a spring, which means that M1 will also move to the right. So let's give, give M1 a displacement x1. x1. And now we can proceed to the free body diagram. Let's start with mass M1. Mass M1 is being now pulled by the spring that connects M1 and M2. And that spring will apply a force towards uh, the right. The magnitude of that force is the relative displacement of the spring times the stiffness K. And that is K1, K2, that is K2 times its relative displacement, which would be x2 minus x1. We are again assuming that x1, x2 is our input. This mass is connected to a fixed frame through another spring of stiffness k1. So if the mass moves by x1, the spring is stretched by x1, the force it applies is K1 times X1. Moving now to M2. Now we know that if M2 pulls on mass M1, from the perspective of M2, there is a force now pulling M2 in the opposite direction of motion because it's slowing, it is slowing it down. And this force is exactly the same as that one that it pulls on M1 but it is applied to M2 in the opposite direction. So the magnitude is K2 times X2 minus X1. Okay, what are now, let's look at this side of M2. What is happening there? If M2 now moves to the right, we see that there is a spring connecting M2 to a fixed reference frame. So if you move M2, that is spring is acting against motion and is pushing the mass back. The force that a spring K3 applies to M2 as M2 moves to the right is toward the left. And the magnitude here is K3 times the displacement of that spring, which in this case is simply X2. All right. But this is very important, again, to note the direction and magnitude of that force. Now, as mass M2 moves to the right, it compresses the spring, the spring resists motion and pushes back. Hence, the arrow points to the left. Now, for mass 1, we have sum of forces equals to m1 x1 what do you have there we have k2 x2 minus x1 minus k1 x1 equals to m1 x1 double dot we can rearrange this equation we can simply leave it like that and for mass 2, we have 
sum of forces equals to m2 x to double dot and all forces in this case are negative we have negative k3 x2 minus k2 x2 minus x1 equals to m2 x2 double dot and that's the equation for mass two and here we have mass one again you can rearrange these equations by moving everything to the right here and equating that to zero and same here but the fundamental equation does not change